GSA has to send 15 to Las Vegas to check out a hotel. I'm a big man. I can't spend 44 bucks for breakfast. Something's not quite right here. What eats at me is the why. When our congressmen scolded the GSA for going to Vegas, they didn't tell us where their own staff members were going. In a six-year span, we counted hundreds of foreign trips from Egypt to Switzerland. Keep in mind, our representatives and their staffers are not allowed to accept any gifts from lobbyists or foreign agents. And yet, we discovered they are accepting trips to luxury resorts around the world, bought and paid for by foreign governments. I think that is a, a loophole that needs to be closed. Representative Kathy Castor helped pass new travel rules after the Jack Abramoff scandal. Remember what he did? Abramoff gave things of value to public officials, including foreign and domestic trips, all with the intent that the public official would act to benefit Abramoff or his clients. But when Congress banned gifts from lobbyists and restricted travel, they created one big exception. Foreign governments can still spend as much as they want whining and dining our lawmakers and their aides on foreign soil. And in many cases, the details and the costs are never reported. Kathy Castor didn't know that. I'm surprised that this loophole exists, and I'm, I'm going to look into uh, how we close it under the rules of the Congress. The list of foreign-funded trips goes on and on. For example, Congressman Bill Young's assistant traveled on Israel's dime. An aide for Congressman Gus Bilirakis accepted trips paid for by Egypt, Cyprus, and the United Arab Emirates. Senator Marco Rubio's policy director accepted similar trips to Switzerland, Taiwan, and Thailand. Those countries all showed them what they wanted them to see in the name of culture. And, of course, culture can mean a lot of lavish kinds of activities. Based on data provided by the watchdog group Legistorm, one country tops the list. China has hosted and paid for more than 200 trips since 2006 that we know of. But only members of Congress and top staffers have to report foreign-funded travel. Mid-level staffers don't. They know. You get a staffer's ear, show them a good time, and they actually end up making recommendations to the sitting Congress member, and that's how the Congress member votes. So watchdogs say this loophole gives foreign governments a way to buy influence in Congress with little oversight. I don't know about buying favor and influence in Congress, but I will tell you that they will do their best to try to put their best foot forward. What I don't want to see is, especially with unfriendly countries, that we're taking trips that are unnecessary.